Threat! Move! Threat! Girlfriends, friends, wives, we travel with people all the time. Do those people always carry guns? Um, does your wife carry a gun? She does now. She does now? No. Absolutely not, right? No. Sometimes. Sometimes? Uh, my girl does, but she keeps it in her purse, so I'm going to get to mine faster. And I'm obviously more situational aware, usually, because I've been doing this for a lot longer. I recognize things she doesn't. Uh, I'm pretty good at spotting CCWs. Uh, she's like, I didn't even see that. But once she looks at it, she realizes it. Um, do people get mugged while they're traveling in pairs? A couple. Absolutely. Because as a criminal, I might identify the fact that his primary concern is going to be protecting his wife, girlfriend, loved one, son, whatever, daughter. Um, my threat to their kid or their wife is going to compel him, possibly, to not put up a fight. So they rely on situations like that, um, basically to get your compliance. So if I have a loved one and I have to get my weapon into play, do I necessarily have time to tell them exactly what I see? Not responding to a spontaneous threat, right? So me and Stefan are buds. Uh, Stefan is anti-gun. He hates them, doesn't want to touch them, but we're still friends. Um, I've taken personal responsibility for my own life, so I carry a firearm. If, uh, if you guys would, because I'm going to present. Um, me and Stefan are walking together, but since we're buddies, we're not holding hands. Uh, and I see a threat. My concern for him is to get him to safety. So is this a situation where I might have to draw my weapon and use my weapon with one hand? If I've got to get him out of the way. Mm -hmm. I have a weapon. Uh, I'm willing to use it. I need to protect us because there's two of us in this situation. This hand needs to be used to tell him to stop doing what he's doing or to move in any way that he can or at least get out of the way where I'm just going to, instead of talking to him, I'm just going to physically push him out of the way. Now, once I've moved him, I can use my hand on my gun, right? Unless he starts acting crazy. Which, do people sometimes do things that we just don't understand? Yeah. Um, so say I'm walking a step behind him, and I see a threat. How would you react, honestly, if you can think of it, if we're walking along, and I just do this? Would you? Yeah, possibly yeah. you're going to grab my arm, right? So now I'm like, I need that, but I don't have it. So we're walking along, and I'm just like, okay. Now, as a full-grown adult, is a full-grown adult going to act differently than a child? Give me a little height. Little kid, right? Obviously, with a child, I have more concerns because I can't rely on them to recognize, after I've gotten their attention by moving them, to recognize what's going on. Uh, they may not have absolutely no concept of it. Three, four, five years old, they don't know what's going on. And with a child, if you would one more time, so we're walking, we're holding hands, it's no, no homo. Um, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, I might pull the child behind me and keep them there with my hand because I don't want to let them go. So these are situations where, realistically, you might have to defend a third party. And you can only do it with your primary hand. Uh, thinking of things realistically, since I'm primarily left-handed, is it wise for me to be on the left when we're walking around? No. Much harder to protect them in a spontaneous threat with them on this side of my body. Because I have to move him, and then hopefully he doesn't do anything weird or crazy or unexpected, and then I have to access my weapon. Now, advantage to this would be, yeah, now I can get both hands on it, hopefully. But I'm at a serious disadvantage with them on this side of my body. So... For me, I like to be over here. I can pull them behind me, or, depending on the situation, 3D World, I can push them into something to get them out of the way. Push them behind a corner, push them behind a door, what have you. And that gives me the chance to get them out of the threat's line of sight, or at least behind me to where I can protect them and present and fire immediately. Am I going to wait until, okay, he's good, and then draw my gun? No. So can my first couple shots, or all of the shots I take, be with one hand? Absolutely. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set you up with a partner 
We're going to work through this at slow speed, and then we're going to go through it at realistic speed. So everybody partner up. Nice. Threat. Move. Nice. Threat. Move. Threat. Take your time. Good. Good. Give you two rounds. Stay on that gun, assess your threat. All right, he's down. Go ahead and pull the weapon back in. Scan, look around you, see the world. All right, what I want you to do, and take your time when I call the command. Draw your weapon and give me two rounds from a close tuck position. Take your time, be aware of where your knees and your feet are, all right? Threat! Alright, now I want you to recover from that position. Get up. Keep your weapon on your threat. Nice. Nice. Alright, please fall back as realistically as you can. Don't administratively get in that position. I want you to actually fall to the best of your ability. And then I want five rounds, however you think it's best to deliver them, based on the distance to your threat. Threat! Recover to a kneeling. Assess your world. Make sure there's not another bad guy. Get off that gun. All right, come to standing. Get that kneeling position. Hit him again. Threat. All right. Do threats always come from the front? No. No. Can we find ourselves in a situation like where I'm doing something else? Maybe I'm getting groceries out of my car, or I'm. Uh, Payphones don't exist anymore. This used to be a pretty common thing at payphones. Say I'm standing at the ATM. Criminals know those things have cameras, so might they try to rob you from the side so they're not on camera? Those things can happen. So we don't always get to draw from the holster and present to our threat as it's right in front of us. We might find ourselves in a situation like this where out of my corner of my eye, I catch movement, and I, and I obviously I'm going to look before I turn, right? Because we, we're lazy on purpose. We want to conserve energy as humans. Like, we don't even think about it. We're intuitive to that. So we look with our head first, and then we invest the movement if we need to. So I look, see my threat, and I'm like, oh, shit. And I go for my gun if that's what's uh, reasonable to do. Uh, might I find myself, like I just the story I just told you, where I'm standing with my back to my vehicle, and the guy, all I hear is, hey, 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 hey. So I turn, and I look over my shoulder, and I see a guy running at me with a shovel on his shoulder. He's coming right at me. So... What did I do? I turned, drew my gun, point my gun at him, um, and obviously the situation ended without shots fired. We can find ourselves in situations all the time where the threat does not present to us. So what we're going to work on is engaging threats from positions where the threat is not immediately apparent. That make sense? Yes. Cool. What? All right, holster up. Face to the right. What? Nice. Holster up. Face to the rear. Now remember, we're gonna look before we draw. That's just realistic, so don't cheat the drill. 
actually look and see what is drawing your attention before you go to your gun. Threat! He's getting up, hit him again! Reload, get those guns up! All right, recover. Threat! All right, get on your back. Recover. Get that gun. So, I'm not gonna need these for right now. Put them on him. Uh, spatial displacement. That's uh, two $15 words uh, to explain what happens when you are knocked down by an unseen assailant and you do not know where they are. Um, based on where the impact comes from, that'll kind of give you an idea of where they are and you'll reflexively try to see in that area as quickly as possible, right? If someone knocks me down from behind, I'm relatively sure they're still behind me unless I receive more data from my senses that tells me they've moved somewhere else, like footsteps or something like that, sound, what have you. Uh, so I get hit from behind and I'm down and I'm reasonably sure he's behind me. I'm probably, depending on you know how you grew up and how you did things and how rough and tumble you played around as a kid, if I get knocked down, I'm probably immediately going to come up and turn. What do I do then if my threat's still behind me? Do I immediately go for my gun if that's re if that's warranted? Say so he's standing behind me with a stick or a bat or something. Or do I roll as I draw? What makes more sense? You remember when I talked about moving offline as we drew? I get that lateral movement? So if I have to roll over to confront my threat, which I kind of do, unless he gets in front of me, I have dead space that I can fill with another technique or another skill, right? So as I'm rolling over, there's no reason why I can't draw my gun. You, carrying an appendix, you pretty much have to roll over to draw your gun, right? I mean, yeah. to make it efficient, anyway. You can draw your gun laying on it, but it's not going to be very efficient. It won't be as fast. So, should we, without an unforeseen circumstance or something preventing you from doing it, roll to our support side so we have access to the gun as we do it, right? If you carry, you carry it at the hip. Can anybody think of a situation where... Um, they would roll over and then draw their weapon, maybe in the case of appendix carry. What about uh, what about you? You got anything? I mean, does that make sense, what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah? definitely. Okay. I can't Fantastic. even think of it. Um, so in this drill, basically what we're going to look at is, is the possibility that you're knocked on your stomach into the prone position, and say your threat's still standing behind you, we're going to do from the front and from the back, maybe even from the side. Uh, we're going to look at those possible scenarios where you're knocked on your stomach and you have to fight your threat starting from that position. Because um, obviously we're not administratively going to be able to prepare for a real life uh, use of force, right? Okay, cool. Let's set it up. Threat! That's right! Get up, get mobility! Threat! 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 And that was nice. You came up to a solution, and it was a, uh, you came up with a solution to a problem, and I didn't even teach you how to do that. Isn't it amazing how much stuff you already know? Yeah. Nice.